Hey everybody, welcome back for another sublimation tutorial. Today we're gonna look at how we do the designs with the words that have pictures inside of them. I will show you in two different programs. The first one will be Inkscape and the second one will be Design Space. So you can pick and choose whichever software you feel like doing. There are other ways to do it, but these are usually the two softwares that work the best. So let's go ahead and check out how we can get a picture into the letters of a word. All right, so here we are in the Inkscape app. This is the app that I choose to use for the picture and letters. For me, it just works easier and you can manipulate it better. And then also I use Inkscape for printing, so I don't have to go from one program to another. It's just already in here and it works really well and it's super easy. If you haven't seen the tutorial where I go over how to print and scale your picture and your paper, there is a tutorial for that as well that's more in detailed, and I will link that up above and below so that you can take a look at that uh, for more detailed in um, the Inkscape program. But for now, we're just going to look at how we do the picture in letters in the Inkscape app. All right, so this image is just a stock image from Google. Nothing special, it's nothing personal to me. Uh, it's just a photo that I'm gonna use to show you how to do this technique. We will go ahead and upload whatever photo you want and you will wanna make sure it's in the square box because the square box is the layout for your paper that you're gonna be printing on. If it's not in the box, then half your image will get cut off. So from here, you're going to want to go to your text tool. You'll make a little box and then type in what you're going to type in. I'm just going to type in the word love and we'll go up to our little cursor. And those little arrows just extend it. You can make it shorter, longer, and then just evenly adjust it if you need to. I would like to use a text that's a little bit bulkier. You're going to get better results when the image is more bolded and more blocky shaped. And more of the picture will be in the text than if it's a slender text version. So to change the font of your text, you just double click on it. Go up to the upper left in the font section. And I like to use the Smart Kid for this specific project. It's just a cute design and it's that big boxy letters so you have a lot of room to put your image into. From here, you'll just go ahead and expand your size just like that. And then also in your fill and stroke here, you're going to kind of change the opacity to a little bit less. That way it's a little bit see-through because you are going to want to lay your text over your image and this is going to show you kind of where it's going to lay a little bit better than if it was not see-through. You can see it kind of blocks things out. You can't see where you're laying your letters. So this just kind of helps see where the background is going to be in your letters. All right. Now, so from here, you can kind of zoom in if you need to. A little bit too far there. And I'm going to adjust my letters and make them a little bit taller and then also a little bit wider just so all the little puppies can fit in properly. I don't like that the letters are so spread out. And if you want to adjust that, again, you'll just double click on the word. You'll get some zero points up here. And this one here is actually uh, the space between the letters and you can adjust the spacing. So I'm going to reduce mine a little bit. It's a little bit slow, so you do got to kind of wait on it a little bit, but it will move your letters for you. Okay, so I like that a little bit better. It gives more squish to the letters, and it can fit more little puppy faces into the letters, and that's what I want. I can see that some of the little faces aren't going to be in the letters, so I'm going to, again, just adjust the size. I just want to put as many little faces in the letters as I can. That way, everybody's getting a view spot. So I'll go ahead and adjust that. And you can do it however you want. I like to make sure everybody's kind of centered as much as possible and just wherever you want to put it. All 
Okay, so I think that's a good viewpoint for now. So I'm going to zoom back out a little bit. So from here, you're going to want to highlight both the picture and the letters. Make sure both are selected. You'll see little dot borders around the word and also the picture. And that means it has been highlighted for you. From here, you'll go to your upper left to object. Come down to where it says clip and you're gonna do the set and you will click that. And you now have Word with pictures in it. And that's that simple. That's why I do really like this. It's just, it's very simple. The more times you do it, the more practice you get, the more comfortable you will be with it. So that is how you do your picture in text on Inkscape. Very easy, very simple, very smooth. We'll go ahead now and see how to do it in Design Space. And from there, you guys can decide which version, what program you prefer to do it on for your projects. So here we are in the Cricut Design Space now. I have the same image. I'm going to keep everything as consistent as I can from the image to the text to the font. The only thing different will be the steps versus Inkscape and Design Space. So I'll go ahead and show you how to do that. You'll still upload your image to whatever image you want to use. You'll go in and use your text tool. And I'm going to just use the same exact word so nothing has changed. I'll go up to my font. And if you haven't noticed yet, your downloaded fonts are actually going to be in the system, uh, not Cricut. For some reason, they decided to separate everything. So now you're in the system to find your downloaded fonts. And we'll do the Smart Kid. And we'll use that one. And so everything versus that's going to be the same. For some reason on the design space, it already has this here um, whited out and these ones are filled in. Not sure why it does that, but it does. And it doesn't exactly matter at this point because unlike the Inkscape where you can just kind of change the um, translucency of it, with design space, you will have to go up to your operation here and change it to the draw pen. And that way it'll have an outline so you can see where your image is behind your letters. With your word letters in design space, you can also adjust the, the space of the letters right here, letter space. You can decrease the space between it, which again, I will do just to keep it consistent. Again, we'll just kind of keep that uh, good right there. And then I'll just adjust it to where I think it'll fit um, the picture. With the design space, when you adjust, it kind of turns your letters. Um, it gives you one line and then another line. So you have to kind of adjust it all around to keep it in that one line. That's what I have found when I try to use design space for this technique. So when you're adjusting size, it's almost easier to just adjust the photo, make it a little bit larger, and then place it behind the letters where you want it to be at. So I think right there for now looks pretty good. I'm going to make it maybe a little bit smaller to get all the little puppy faces in there. And we'll see kind of where we're at from there. So we'll try that. Now that you have your picture in the letters where you want it to be, you'll go over here and make sure that both of these are selected. For this step, you do have to have two items selected. So you can click one of them and then you can click shift and then click on the other item and then it'll highlight both of them for you. So they're both highlighted and you can move them at the same time. Um, when we go to do this step, do note that you can only do two items at a time when you go to cut an image. You can't do three or four at a time. For some reason, it only lets you do two. So once you have these highlighted, you'll go down to the slice button here and you'll click that and then you'll wait for it to come up with a slice result right in this tab uh, box right here. 
So now you see there's three items, uh, slice results. The only one I care about is this one right here. This is the one that has the picture and the letters. The other two you can delete. And now you have your image in your letters. So that's how you do um, the pictures and letters with the Cricut Design Space. I, like you probably have noticed, I do have a preference on which app I use, but it's all up to whatever you want to use and what's going to work best for you. I'll go ahead and do a side-by-side -side view here real quick just to show you uh, the different looks from the Inkscape versus the design space. Okay, so here I have the Inkscape on the left and the design space on the right. You can see there is a difference. Um, the Cricut Design Space, you can see I kind of had a little trouble trying to manipulate the letters. It just, for me, didn't work out as I would have liked of with the ease of it. Versus the Inkscape, you could see I smoothly was able to move the letters, resize them. So again, it's just really preference on what you want. I just really like Inkscape. Um, there's no affiliation with it. I don't promote it for any other reason besides I just enjoy using it. It works well and it's easy. The one other thing I did want to point out with the difference between Inkscape and Design Space, if you're going to do it in Design Space, you're going to eventually have to figure out how to get it moved over to a different app. If you want to print larger than a specific size, I don't know the exact size, but Ink Design Space will only let you print so large. Whereas Inkscape, um, you can almost print up to whatever size you want, as long as you have the right size of paper to print on. So you make it in the app and then you just print it. You don't have to fiddle with moving it to an app or any other software. So these are the two different ways that you can do the picture and letter method, um, whatever works best for you. If you enjoyed this tutorial, if it was helpful for you, go ahead and boop that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share for others so they can get helped as well. Have a wonderful day and happy crafting.